Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Welcome to Get It Growing, the gardening program of the Lafayette Parish Master Gardeners. My name is Janae Foley, and today we have with us Susan, Sandra Thayall, and Doc Tate, who are both members of the Mike Bernard Acadiana Chapter of the American Hibiscus Society. Tell us a little bit about Mike Bernard, because if you have, have an organization named after you, you've got to be an interesting person. Mike was a jack of all trades. He was a photographer, he was a farmer, he was a fisherman, an electrician, and most of all, he enjoyed hibiscus. He enjoyed hibiscus so very much that he joined the Baton Rouge Hibiscus Club before one was established here in Acadiana. He would drive monthly down to, the, to Baton Rouge for their uh, meetings. There he met Mr. Bobby DuPont from Plaquemine, who had uh, a nursery there. Bobby came down to Festival of Fleur in 1999, along with Mike, uh, presenting the hibiscus blooms, the new hybrid blooms that he was uh, working with. At that time, interest was uh, acquired from people that were interested in, in coming to make a new club, and uh, the club was formed in uh, the year 2000. Poor Mike, uh, he had uh, developed carcinoma of the lungs, and uh, two years after the club was in existence, uh, Mike succumbed to, to cancer. But he did establish a wonderful That's organization, right. and did. you both evidently purchased That's hibiscuses right. at that first show that he attended with his plants. That's right. And from there got interested in growing these tropical flowers. That's Tell right. us a little bit about how you would get a bed prepared. We always encourage people, before you buy the plants, know where you're going to put the plants so that you're not getting home and watering the plants for two weeks while, while you know, you, you've done that, well, we've, all do, we've all done it. <laughs> that's a big order because you're talking about watering the plants already. Most of us in the hibiscus community uh, keep our plants in pots over the year because when winter comes, we can just move them into the greenhouse or under the carport or wherever you happen plan to store them because they cannot stay out over the winter if it gets too cold because they are exotics. So if you're going to plant them in the ground, that's fine for the summer. Drop them in the hole, let them enjoy them all summer, and then just lift the pot when it gets cold and bring it in, indoor. Okay, now what size pot are we talking about? Well, that depends on what you, where you purchase it. Sometimes you might purchase one from a local nursery that might be already in a three-gallon pot, or if you go to Festival de Flore, you could purchase one that's in a one-gallon pot or a two. Okay, so it's fine to start out in that pot. You may start out in that pot, but usually you will graduate if you're lucky enough to keep your plant. Every year? Yes. You're going to move it up in pot size roughly now, every If you year. must plant them in the ground, if you feel like you have... A rose bed preparation is ideal. Okay. You need good drainage. You need a pH of 6.5, thereabouts, and especially good drainage is what you adequately need, and adequate sun sunshine, four to six, eight hours a day. The afternoon sun is the worst sun. Mm -hmm. Even though they are called tropical, the newer exotics are mostly subtropical. And hibiscus uh, will stop blooming when the temperature gets over 90, 95, unless they are protected with some type of uh, shade protection in the evening. So actually morning sun in our climate is best. best. It's perfect. That's the best. They require a lot of water, but it's best if you can avoid watering them late in the evening. You don't want them to have wet feet. Uh, that produces something called root rot. Right. And, and so you try to avoid that. We're talking that. about really a lot of similarities with roses and all plants that we keep talking about here. Get that organic matter in your soil. Get them in raised, get them in raised beds. Um, as you can see, there are hundreds, probably thousands, of varieties to choose from. Uh, many, 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 many colors. I think you were both telling me that you don't have a green and you don't have one other color. A true blue. A true blue. As most flowers don't have true <laughs> blues. Right, right. But we're working on it. 
And and you mentioned a few minutes ago a gentleman called Bobby Dupont. Now I understand Bobby won a significant award this year. Go ahead. Bobby actually won Hibiscus of the Year for the year 2004. Not only did he win the Hibiscus of the Year, he also had runner-up Hibiscus of the Year. The Hibiscus of the Year was Black Dragon, and the runner-up was Etouffee. Bobby is in Plaquemine, Louisiana with DuPont Nursery, and he has a wide variety of cultivars. He also has a website, that uh, people, dupontnursery.com, that people can order from on the internet. Or he is more than happy to give you a tour when you go by the uh, nursery. Now, his award was from the American Hibiscus Society. American Hibiscus, Hibiscus Society. Okay, okay. There, are, there is an international society, but, but his came from the American Hibiscus. That's correct. And we that is the first time that anyone has ever produced two winners, first and second place. It's and they're first from, winner Louisiana. from Louisiana. That's, That's right. right. First winner from Louisiana. Yes. Mention perhaps three or four or two or three each of your favorite varieties that you have here today. Oh my goodness. Oh uh, well, let's start with, uh, well, actually they're small today, but these are um, red snappers. For some reason, men like the name red snapper. I don't know why, but it's usually a much larger flower. It's the heat that has uh, had made it small right now. This is a bicolor, right? What, right. Red and white with red a little bit white. of pink and as, this, it, as it fades. This is considered a double. It's not, it's a cup and saucer double, as you can see. It's not a full double, mm -hmm. but it is considered as compared to a full double like this one, which is C-E-R-E-S. That's the name. Series. 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 Yeah. Punctuation for me is a little difficult. And this is a miniature double, mini ballerina, which is a nice full bloomer. I mean, full bloomer, I said the bush is usually completely covered with blooms. What about uh, Nightfire over here? This, mm -hmm. is this one is an example of one that does have blue in it. The outer edges are considered blue. It's gotten on the blue, the blue tone. And one of the larger ones, possibly? Well, Fantasy Charm... Or uh, Ruth Watson. This is a half, half the size of what Fantasy Charm usually right. is. Fantasy Charm can grow to 9 to 10 inch bloom and is a lovely bloom. They're a little bit stressed by the by the heat by the drought. We've had, and a, the heat. we've had drought and heat, and that's that's made it more difficult. The Ruth Watson gets even larger than that one. This is Ruth Watson. It's again another wow. double, more of a cup and saucer double. Right. They get perhaps this large. I've seen them as large as this and as high the as this plate at size. the shows mm -hmm. when we mm -hmm. compete. And then we have the real miniature blooms, which is this is called Psyche. It's more of a garden variety. And by garden variety, I mean it'll grow on its own roots. Generally, it's uh, a little more cold hardy than, than most of the hibiscus. Now, we talk about cold hardy and protecting them. Really, we're referring to below 40 degrees. Uh, generally, the plants will tolerate our mild winters mm -hmm. here. But if we do get uh, 20, 12 to 24 hours of weather below 40 degrees, then you will hurt the, hurt the plants. All right, so typically you start watching the weather when? Probably at the end of November. That, that's what, yeah. that would be my guess, too, and just getting right. ready. And you just start looking. Right, and you have, if you have large numbers, you've got to prepare that's a, right. a little bit more than if you have only five that's or right. ten plants to deal with. You bring them in where? I have um, three greenhouses that I bring mine into the greenhouse. But anything that's protected from the north wind, mm -hmm. mostly, uh, you can bring them into your garage, your basement, uh, your laundry room, if your right. wife will let you, or a sunroom. Uh, they will bloom year-round if, if the temperature that's is right. above 55 degrees and you keep them well uh, fed and, and watered. Uh, now, if you're going to store them, they don't take, they do not need as much water or uh, fertilizer. Mm -hmm. But it, you should bring them back out in maybe February, March, and start preparing them again for the spring. Let's mention, I, I know they don't have many diseases, but let's do talk <laughs> about this wonderful example that I brought from my personal yard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because they do have problems with, with leaf insects and diseases. Yes. Cucumber beetles will, will eat, grasshoppers will eat. Grasshoppers um, are awful. Um, 
you can have aphids, aphids generally around the buds, uh, and the aphids are what they're called formed. They ants form aphids to secrete because the aphids will secrete a, a Swedish secretion that the ants eat. So if you see ants around, you probably better be looking for for aphids. Now, what do you like to? How do you like to treat various problems? If you have a good sp spray from your garden hose, first of all, and spray your plants on a regular basis, you will prevent a lot of a lot of problems. Just knocking them off knocking physically them off. with a with a water right. hose. Or you can use uh, insecticidal soap or regular dish water, a tablespoon to a gallon and spray your plants and acts as a suffocation along with uh, fine uh, oil or neem oil. But the only problem with using oils, be careful that you do not do it in the uh, heat of the, heat day. Of the day. Right, right. Uh, because it will uh, damage the plants, it will scorch them and, and give you a problem. Other than the organic ways of, of treating them, there are uh, insecticides that you may use, fungicides, um, Bayer has Bayer an excellent uh, rose and garden uh, spray, which is uh, merit or metaprocrit, <laughs> whichever way. That's it. Which That's is good. excellent uh, all around protectant. But you can use Arthene and uh, the oil and the merit, and that's a generally inconclusive. Uh, a treatment for them. And we need to talk a little bit about water, especially at this time of year. They need quite a bit of water when you have a drought situation like this. You can tell. Most of them will let you know whether they need a lot of water or not. They're droopy. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some tend to need more water than others. I would think that at this time of, of the drought period, uh, a daily watering uh, is almost required. A nice shower in the afternoon, in the early afternoon, seems to do wonders for them. It would be like you being out in the sun all day sure, and then somebody sure. taking a hose and showering you with it. I know I found I didn't do this last year and my blooms were not as pretty. This year I watered every day and I showered them and they love it. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. mean they're really doing well for me. And, and when you say watering you mean soaking. Too. I mean a nice soaking a good, thorough but soaking. not late in the evening where the water can remain it's in the bottom of the pot and cause root rot. Right. Now, you were also telling me, and you brought <laughs> a little My grouping, babies. Her, her baby, yes. her, her seedlings. Yes. If you want to uh, do some hybridizing, um, you'll start off by um, pollinating two of your choice by putting the noses together. Whoever receives the pollen is the mother, whoever gives the pollen is the father. After a, a certain period of time, usually it takes a couple of months, mm -hmm. you will get a big pod that will turn brown, and when that pod explodes, you'll get something like these little tiny seeds. Uh, you get any number. I mean, some of them have only four seeds in them, some have as many as 20. Eventually, you'll, you'll nick those little seeds, you'll put them in a medium, in a little pot like this, and I have these three here, um, Midnight Liberty by um, Magic Carpet Ride. These are going to hopefully bloom in about 18 months. If I'm lucky, they'll bloom in 18 months, and I'll get to see a brand new variety. Right, now each cross that she does is going to result in, in unique and di different varieties, but you only have to wait 18 months to see those. We do want to talk a little bit, you know, when we cover a lot of information in a program like this, people get a little, a little overwhelmed. There are places you can go for information. The LSU Ag Center has a tropical hibiscus booklet, and we've mentioned before, anytime you, you get enthused about growing one particular type of plant like this, you start buying books. And you, you do a lot of self-education, and you've brought a few that are, that are good reading material. This is the official uh, tropical handbook of the American Hibiscus Society. In it, you have information on hybridizing, on planting, on uh, propagating, and caring for your hibiscus. Now, the American Hibiscus Society, as a member, publishes what they call the seed pod, it's their publication, which has information in it uh, year-round, every three months, you get a, a seed pod. 
and it has information uh, on the shows that the Hibiscus uh, Society puts on and on uh, any information or places where you may get, uh, may get uh, plants and, and whatnot from. And also, uh, any member, anybody that would like to be a member of our society may uh, come to our Nelson uh, Horticultural Center on the first Tuesday of uh, each month at 6.30 p.m. You do not have to be a member to attend the meetings. If you have any questions about society or hibiscus and would like to know some information, please come and join us. You're more than welcome. Any, any plant society in town will be more than happy to talk to you for hours and hours and answer any question. Right. They've heard all the questions and they have made all the mistakes and they can really save you a lot of time and effort and money. Right. So attend any of these society meetings that you're interested in. And you have a phone number here? Yes, uh, this is the phone number for the president of our society, Rick Landers. His number is 289 -0403. If you would like more information about the society, please call him. I'd like to mention also that today's collection of blooms is brought here uh, by Dr. Tate and by Buddy Short, who is a member of our society. We try to help each other out sure, with the collection of have, blooms. Okay, probably one question that we haven't answered. When people come to you and say, my hibiscus won't bloom, what's the answer? <laughs> there, there can be a there lot, there be can be a lot of problems. It, it could be the heat, mm -hmm. uh, it could be overwatering, it could be uh, underwatering. underwatering. Lack of fertilization, right. lack of proper uh, light, sunshine. Too much sunshine, any number of things. It, you can't really tell right away unless it's something very obvious like root rot or uh, die, dieback. Right, so, so you may need some, you know, sort of specialized information yeah. if you're having problems. You know, you can go to the LSU Ag Center, you can go to the Call American Hi us. Hibiscus Society, Call our society. and they will be more than glad to help you. Let's talk a little bit more about some of these beautiful varieties. The gentlemen have, have gone to all the trouble to, to pick them. We certainly want to, to highlight a few more of them. Well, we're really sorry that uh, we've had such an intense heat wave come upon us because most of these blooms are supposed to be almost double the size. This but is now high you do voltage. understand, you see, that any of the rest of us would be just <laughs> thrilled and delighted to have these blooms, and they're apologizing for yes, them. Yes, but when you, but when just you can imagine see the them size. And double their glory. Yes, this is high voltage, and normally it is a bloom about this large, just enormous, just as uh, Red Snapper was, a great big bloom and fantasy charm over mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But size isn't really important. It's the color, it's the shape, the design. When we have our competitions, mm -hmm. we go to shows throughout the year. They're not necessarily looking for the largest bloom. Right. They're looking for the color, uh, the variation in color, the brightness, the, um, the consistency of the bloom, whether it's ruffled or, or smooth textured or whether it's a single or a double. Now the blooms that you see here today belong to the uh, species Rosa sinensis. There's a bloom here, which is Texas Star, which is a member of the hibiscus family, but is not a member of Rosa sinensis. No, the, these are a wonderful plant, though, too. They're a little yes. native, very, yes. very, you know, it, it might be a good beginner's plant if you want to get into hibiscus and work your, work your way up as, well, as the little... Psyche. Yeah, the little psyche, some of these that are root hardy, these are wonderful plants for hummingbirds. They're very durable. We have some of these in our demonstration garden. We have the, the red and a, and a little peach that are the smaller mm -hmm. blooms that are a little hardy. And we have a question about fertilizer. Which fertilizers do you use? Well, if you want to use a granular fertilizer in the ground, a fertilizer, first of all, you want a low phosphorus number, a high potassium for, for, for hibiscus. Elevated phosphorus in the ground will prevent the hibiscus itself from absorbing some of the minor elements that are in there. Mm -hmm. So we usually go with a 2-1-3 ratio, nitrogen, phosphorus to potassium. Uh, if you are going to use something like miracle Grow or Peters with 20-20-20 or a high uh, phosphorus level, it is better to foliar feed your plants. 
where the roots will not be absorbing the right. phosphorus okay. or okay. Be, the phosphorus will not be tying up your minerals in the, uh, in okay. the soil. And what about a slow release? Well, that, the granules talking about the slow release. Oh, okay. You, you or, okay. Or whatever. okay. What happens when you have too much uh, of the phosphorus, you end up with um, a very bushy, dark green plant, a beautiful plant, but it doesn't produce that many blooms. So that might be one reason that, yeah, that you're not getting blooms. That's yeah. right. And let's run over those again, too. Be because surely, if you're trying to grow hibiscus, you want those blooms. So run through just briefly again some possible causes of poor blooming? Too much heat, uh, okay. temperature. Now you can't L really con control that can, in Louisiana. You can control right. it by putting in dapple shade underneath okay. oak trees or pine trees. And which, if you're in containers, you can do. You're you can move to, that plant right. around and or let shade it cloth. find, let it find shade a happy cloth. home. Okay. Okay. Help. That won't be in the landscape, but you, you have the plants when you get the blooms. Mm -hmm. But you can use the hibiscus in the landscape. Just try to find them like under oak trees or mm -hmm. pine trees, of that nature. Around your pool where there's plenty of moisture, mm -hmm. it's a, another good spot to use them. And then again, as Sandra said, a sprinkle in the afternoon or if you have a, a water system where you time it and, and have them come on and sprinkle them in the afternoon. Uh, feeding is the next thing. Fertilizer, again, uh, decrease your nitrogen if you're not getting blooms. Mm -hmm. uh, increase your potassium. Uh, watering, no wet feet. No wet feet. They, they love water, they love to drink, but they do not like their roots standing in water. And remember, too, this time of year is hot for you <laughs> when you're out in the sun, you know, Take, take precautions, wear your sunscreen, wear your hat, because it is hot out there if you're in the heat of the day. Well, we, you know, we have to protect ourselves as well as, as well as our plants. We were told at convention by a wonderful fellow who came to visit us from Australia. His name was Chris Noble. He's a hybridizer and... Uh, Plantsman in Australia. Plantsman in Australia. And he said, which, which I think is profound something, he said, treat your hibiscus the way you would treat yourself. If you're too hot, then they're too hot. If, they, if you need water, they need water. Right. Okay, now we've answered the fertilizer question and our big question, we remind you again that the Hibiscus Society meeting is the first Tuesday of the month at the Ira Nelson Horticulture Center. And we'll go back to talking about some of these beautiful varieties. What's All your right. personal favorite? Well, I wanted to actually to say something about this little one right here. Mm -hmm. This is a Pride of Hankins. This is a very important little fellow. He's, he looks like a little average fellow, but actually he's extremely important because he is what we use as rootstock. Okay. If you are going to do any grafting, then Pride of Hankins is what you use for that job. Now, why, why is it used as rootstock? It takes the cold temperatures better? It, it does take the cold temperatures better. It is also more res resistant to uh, moisture, more resistant than others, so more resistant to root rot. Mm -hmm. And it grows rapidly. It, it strikes roots quickly when you do want to start uh, your rootstock. Now, okay, let, let me ask this. Are there beginner varieties, you know, varieties that are a little bit sturdier? Pride, Pride of Hankins. Hank okay, right. <laughs> any, any others I was really... Psyche good. would be another. Psyche, Psyche is another. another. Uh, the President, which is an, one of the oldest cultivars that uh, the nurses have put out. Mm -hmm. uh, Painted Lady, which is a uh, Seminole Pink. Right, that's a good These one. are all what most people call garden varieties, but they are beautiful blooms, oh. and they bloom excessively. Right. They grow on their own roots. Mm -hmm. They're more weather resistant, right. temperature and heat and uh, cold, heat and cold, and they are uh, moisture, root rot resistant. And those, that's what, you know, I was sort yeah. of easing in with the Texas uh, star right. and then moving, you know, moving up a step and then getting into, now tell us too, a little bit about the categories in the American Hibiscus Society. There's an amateur. Well, that, this is when we go to the competitions, mm -hmm. and, and there are quite a few competitions. Um, there are four categories, amateur. Uh, everyone who begins can be an amateur with as many blooms as you wish. You do, I mean, as many plants as you wish. You don't 
need to be limited at that point. You can only uh, be an amateur for two years. Then you have to move up one step to the collector category, if you wish, which means you have 75 plants or less. Actually, you could go from amateur straight to open collector, which is anything above 75 plants. And, and Doc, you are a? No, open collector. And, and I'm a collector. And? I have two hibiscus. <laughs> You'll be an amateur. Right. No, as long as you can be an amateur for two years at the sh on the show competition. Right, okay. And then Mine regardless show. Remember, I brought this leaf in. All right. You and brought it for a purpose. Right. And the competitions are most fun for people, for amateurs who may not even be a member. Okay. You are welcome to come to our show and enter a bloom. You could win a ribbon. Oh, how, and, and you did. I did I'll bring one. There's a ribbon right there, David. You can win. But if you have any questions that we haven't covered, attend a meeting. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Love to have you. Good.